Welcome to another edition of Our City. A few things going around the city of Elizabeth this week. On Wednesday, April 1st, which is also April Fool's Day, for all of you that want to play practical jokes on your friends and or your co-workers, I'm going to attend a seminar presented by We Are One New Jersey. It will be held in council chambers on the third floor of City Hall. And on Friday of April 3rd of this week, please note that City Hall will be closed in observance of Good Friday. And I also want to wish all of my friends in the Jewish community an enjoyable Passover season, which also starts this weekend, coinciding with Easter uh, for those of us in Elizabeth as well. And on Saturday, April 4th at 9 in the morning, I'll attend an Autism Awareness Weekend. It will be held at O'Brien Field, which is located on 3rd Avenue in the city of Elizabeth. I hope all of you enjoy this holiday weekend coming up uh, in, in the city of Elizabeth, and I hope the weather continues to get better. If you need more information on these events or any other events, please call our public information office at 908-820-4124. And please stay with us after these messages, where I'll be joined by the president of Kane University, Dr. Dawood Frye. <laughs> Offering everything you could want from college, including a life. Kane University. Welcome back to our city. I'm pleased to be joined in tonight's show by the president of Kane University, Dr. Dawood Frye. Dr. Frye, welcome to the show. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. It's been a long time. Uh, it has been. You've been on this show before. Uh, a few times, yes. But now we tape it at Kane University, so it's an easy. That makes it easier, yeah. right? So. World-class university, yes. really a bold statement. Tell us about Kane University's travels uh, to get to this status. Well, if, if, if you look at what higher education has become because of online and some of the other uh, operations that are now available, if you do not offer qualitatively superior programs, you will not succeed. To become a world-class institution, you have to build world-class facility create world-class programs, hire world-class faculty, and dear students. We have students from 72 different countries, including China, now the largest foreign country sending students to our institution. Now, I'm a student of Kane University, <coughs> a couple of degrees from here. Twice. Twice. Um, I, for one, have seen this campus grow, and on last week's show, we had Deacon Joe Caparasso, who graduated with two, a master's degree here right. in 71. This was his first visit back yes. since 71. He was blown away. It has changed. It has a lot of great things. And we've been working especially with your city uh, and with Hillside, and to a certain extent with Union. We have been able to really build this into an amazing asset for the county and for the region that we serve. Now, one of the things we talked about uh, off, off camera as well as you mentioned it in your opening comments is online education. Correct. How does a university or even a two-year college these days, how do they compete against online universities, uh, especially with the resource of time so precious to many people? It is very difficult, but if there are certain programs that still do not lend themselves to online. For instance, professional programs like nursing, occupational therapy, speech pathology, natural sciences like biology, chemistry, pre-medicine, design, architecture, and things like that. So the university has to make a shift to those programs that cannot be qualitatively offered uh, through online and create its online programs that guarantees some sort of a quality assurance. So a guy like me that has a degree in <coughs> economics and a master's right. in public administration, it would be much easier for me to take those degrees online. Correct, correct. And, and, and if you take them online, but then you lose the, the feel of the college campus. Well, th that's only one part of it. Uh, research is very clear. Less than 30% of the learning actually occurs in the classroom. The rest of it is the interaction, the facilities, the library, the resources, and the projects that you do with the other students. That is part of the, the experience of higher education. Now, my notes don't go into this, but <coughs> the library that you mentioned is extremely right. important. We've 
toured the library, the Nancy Thompson Library here, right. and we have a, a system in Elizabeth, a library system that we're real proud of. Right. But libraries have evolved over the last 10 to 20 well, years. Well, in our case, uh, now about 70% of our expenses are on digital material. And, and the digital material can be reached in a much wider fashion. Correct. Faster, quicker, and cheaper. Does anybody go in the library and actually look at a book anymore? Well, actually, you need to be creative. We put the Starbucks in the library. We put uh, learning support systems in the library. On the average day before we made those changes, about four to 500 people showed up in the library. Now the average is close to 5,000. Because you've made it entertaining to get to the library. You make it a place for them to be. You just have to adjust. Another word you used early on in this conversation is investments. Right. What investments are you making to ensure that Kane continues to attract students, but more importantly, that the students come here are able to afford their education? Well, we are the most affordable comprehensive university in the state of New Jersey. We're going to keep it like that. But at the same time, there is a certain level of expense beyond which if you went, you'd lose the mission of affordability for the first generation Americans like me and first in their family to get a college degree like you. So you need to balance all of these things and make sure that you provide an opportunity for the American dream to your students in a way that they can afford it. And so far we've been able to do that. And, and your state of the college speeches or your state <coughs> of the university speeches right. have always talked about affordability. Yes. And um, when I went here, one of the reasons I went here in the 70s was it was affordable and right. it was close. Yes. So do people come here to live and, or do, is it still basically a community university? Well, we have uh, three times as many people living on campus now than 10 years ago. Uh, but still a very large number commute. Uh, the commuting is, it is a very expensive proposition for a lot of students. And also the graduation rates in four to five years of the commuter is much longer than it is for people who reside on campus. The commuter will take longer to graduate? Correct. And much longer. Much longer. Right. In my case, it was much longer. Correct. Because <laughs> you, you're not here. You, you can't. You go, you get you're out. You're not here. You, you, you think it's going to take you half an hour. It takes you an hour. Then you miss the class and say, I'm not taking three classes. I'm taking two. And th th all of these things put together. Every year, you delay the undergraduate graduation beyond four years. You lose about $65,000 on the average. So you don't gain money because they stay an extra year and pay for more classes? Well, they lose $65,000. I gain 11000 They lose it. The, 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 the student students do. Because yeah. it takes that much longer to get into the workforce. Well, because first of all, if you got an average of, let's say, $45,000 job, you lost that one. And plus, you're going to pay another $15,000 to go. To go to school. Right. Dr. Ferrari, one of the things that you're extremely proud of that we've talked about in the past is the, the Teachers of the Year, right. as rated by the state of New Jersey, uh, the last three or three out of the last four, you can you probably all three I, of them. All the last three, yes, have come from Kane. Correct. And tell us about n their education and their background because it's different in all three. Yes, the what happened was in in 2010 we made a decision that we not only want to be the largest producer of teachers but the best. We raised the, the standards, we raised the support system. In the last four years, when they set for the Proxis II exam at graduation time, which is the mechanism that certifies you to be a teacher, not a single student from Kane University has failed. No other university in the state of New Jersey can say that. And we have three of the teachers of the year from New Jersey, from Kane. And we're hoping to get the fourth one. So every year, this this is picked, and and right. it, it's a great record. I mean, you get to it say is. it, you get to show it off in the gala. You get, I just did. You just did again. <laughs> yes. Uh, so the the issue in China and right. the, and Kane University, it shows a vision and foresight by this world class education we're talking about. How how did it come about? How, when did the light bulb go off and say we we can we can do this? Well, uh, I think you recall it because you, you taught some of the courses for the Chinese. When I was the head of the public administration program, 
we started this MPA program for the Chinese in 1996 or 97, I'm not sure which year. I taught one of those courses. Right, okay. Yeah, for the Chinese. And as time went on, we had close to 120, 130 of top officials in China being trained right here at Kane. They liked the education, they liked the environment. And in uh, 2006, uh, the, the party chairman at the time, Xi Jinping, came to Kane to extend that project. So we were in the car going to visit Governor Corzine to Trenton, and he told me that uh, a lot of the students want to come to Kane and get a master's degree, but we can't afford sending all these people to America. It's very expensive. I said, Mr. Chairman, there's another way of doing that. He leaned toward me and says, like what? I said, we could come to you. If you give us the land and build the structures and facilities, as an affordable institution, we go at the same price for you. He says, I will follow up on it. And he did. And after four years of going back and forth between all the regulations and everything that goes with it in China, in the US in 2011, we broke ground. Now we have about 600,000 square feet of academic and residential space over there, about 900 students, and we're taking 600 students every year for the next five years. And how many students from Kane are going there? Well, from here, how many American students? I should American say? students, this semester we have about nine. Uh, we have about 32 from China that come in, pay in cash. Our hope is that the Wenzhou students, about 10% of them, would choose to come to Kane, USA. Now, the party chairman you mentioned is now the president of China, correct? He is the president of China now. Yeah. That doesn't hurt. That doesn't hurt, no. no. Not at all. No, not at all. Not at all. So, the, the, uh, the efforts that are made with China, one of the things we talked about was censorship. Is that an issue in a college education? Actually, uh, if you find ways to solve the problem, they're willing to listen. I'm not telling the Chinese how they should run their lives, and they're not telling me how sh we should conduct the business. They understand that in an American system, freedom of expression and freedom to choose the material that you need is there. That's part of the educational system. So what we did, we came up with a mechanism uh, to ensure that our students in China have access to everything that our students in the US has. The proposal I made, which they agreed to, we put a fiber line from here to Halsey Street in Newark, and from there we go directly to Shanghai, from there directly to Wenzhou. So our students in China log on to the system as if they were physically here in the US. They come, we authenticate it here in our library system, they're into Google. There is no Google available in China. No Google. But we no. have a version of Google here called Kane Google. You get on it and you have access to everything. That allows the Chinese to prevent those who are not Kane students to not have access to Google. It allows us to bring them over here and authenticate them as students of Kane, and they have access to everything our students at Kane will say. But when Chinese students come here, I would imagine they have access to Google. The same Kane Google. Yeah, of course. Yeah, same but they thing. could also, once they're here, they could probably get They can go anywhere they want. Yeah. Right. And they understand. Stay with us. We're going to run some commercials, come back, talk more about Kane University. Thank you, sir. Please stay with us after these messages. I'll be back with more with Dr. Dawood Farahi and Kane University. Welcome back to our city where I'm joined by Dr. Dawood Farahi, the president of Kane University. So one of the things we we're talking about the break is uh, the, the town to gown issues and the disagreements that have been publicly aired between Kane University and the Township of Union. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? Well, the, 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 the property in question is the site of so, uh, former Shearing Plow, now owned by Mark. The university is on three sides of it. The Kane family had a right of first refusal, which they transferred to the university. Uh, we have a different understanding than the township does. But there is a way of solving that. I have said that many times, that uh, uh, the township uh, looks at it as primarily uh, a source of income as property, so any public institution. Well, I have to tell you, as a mayor, I yeah. would look at it the same way. Right, yeah. but there is a happy medium. At the same time, uh, you would, if I were in your town, you would say, look, they hire 500 people, 
that live in my town. They buy close to 15, 16 million dollars a year worth of products. It makes my town look good. It makes it a livable place. It has a great university. So you have to make that combination. You could look at, uh, say, well, there are 16 churches in my town. There are 22 hospitals in my town. There's so on. There's a medium in between. We want to make sure that the town doesn't get financially hurt. But at the same time, the town need to recognize that we're a growing university, we're landlocked, we got no place to go, and we have a legitimate right to find out a solution for it. Well, I hope it gets worked out. I can, I can understand both sides of the issue, especially as a mayor. I am more than willing to work it out. So STEM is a uh, term yes. that Kane University is really wrapping their arms around as well. Correct. When we started that program in 2004, 2005, you remember, that wasn't a big deal at that time. People were talking about it, but it was. So we created the New Jersey Center for Science, Technology, and Mathematics, which focuses on the STEM programs. It is something that the next two decades will be the primary engine of growth, not only for this area, but for the entire country. That's where the future is. All we're in the building. You have a STEM building here, too, correct, right? we you, do. You've been there many times. I yeah. have. Yes. Well, we have one of the things we found out that uh, the majority... What does STEM stand for, tell our viewers so they know? Uh, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. So what we have now is we looked at who we serve. We found out there are two major deficiencies. One in scientific areas, and two in producing science in math teachers. We are the largest producer of teachers in the state of New Jersey, and yet we produced about 31 math and science teachers. In most other countries, a math and science teachers account for about one third of all the teaching staff. In New Jersey, that number is less than 8%. And the other thing is, people didn't think minorities in women could excel in, in sciences. So when we created the program in the last four years, for which I have data, 65% of my students in the STEM programs are either women or minorities. Their four-year graduation rate, their four-year graduation rate is second only to Princeton. The number that graduate in five years from the STEM programs here at Kane are 93% the highest graduation rate of any institution in New Jersey. That's a fact. And there's another thing. Those who go for, for the teaching side, not a single one of them in the last four years have been unemployed. Everybody gets a job, and most of them get a job before graduation. And the ones that go into biomedicine, to Drexel Medical School, which is a program we have, to biotechnology and so on, they're all either employed or go and doing doctoral programs. It is an amazing success story, and it meets a need that people should pay attention to. In about two or three decades, close to half of the population in this area of the state would be minorities in different combinations. And if you ignore that 50% of the population, in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, this nation would suffer greatly 50 years from now. And you get that market, we got it, we get amazing application rates for it, we got amazing success for it. It's one of the best things we have done. So, in, in, this, in the Kane University, you, besides that, you also invested in architecture. And uh, th that school, named after Michael Graves, is also growing. Uh, that school uh, will grow. Will it grow. hasn't grown that. Uh, Michael Graves and a group of people that are the best in that field came up with the curriculum for it. Uh, we're going to change the name to an institute and make it much larger than, than we thought. Uh, since Michael has passed, we will make some adjustments to it. That's the future too, because today architects, the way you see it, will be a thing of the past because people will not ask to create places that look the same. They will ask for spaces. They will change it 50 times before construction. So they, you can't go away for a week or two and come back and, with another blueprint. It's all done 
with computers. I had some of those kids and teachers on the show here a couple of weeks ago. Right. They're fascinating. Yes. Yeah, their ideas, their creativity, extremely well, fascinating. Well, they did some of the fascinating stuff for the Project Enough, for the human rights, for some of the other stuff. And the STEM program, I just wanted to say one thing, and I hope if you ha have a chance to do it. There's several of those students from Elizabeth that get a full ride and they go through the STEM program. You bring them in and sit them over here and you talk to them. You will be amazed at how accomplished they have become. I hope my staff's listening so we can track these kids down and get them we on the can, show. We can track them down for you. We will find exactly who are from Elizabeth currently or just graduated one or two years and get four or five of them. Some of the projects that they do are just amazing. Some of the thought process that goes through it is even better. So we're about to wrap up and I just want to uh, cover you're receiving this year the Distinguished Citizen Award from the Patriots Path Council of the Boy Scouts. Congratulations. Thank you, sir. And I think it's a great honor that they're recognizing the president of a university for a Boy Scout Award. Well, they, they, they thought that our success in the STEM program was something that uh, made a big difference, and I'm grateful for their recognition. And you have the Global Business School that we didn't get to touch on much, but maybe we can wrap up with the efforts on that area. That is a program that we thought will have 50 to 60 students, now has 150, will double next year. And every single student in that program will be allowed to go to a foreign country on a consulting project and come back over there to get two or three job offers. I want to thank you, Doctor, for taking the time to join us on the show this evening. I'm proud to be an alum of Kane University and appreciate your leadership. Well, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Be glad to be here anytime. For Dr. Dawood Farahi, I'm Chris Bolwage. May you enjoy Passover and celebrate Easter. We'll see you next week on another edition of Our City. Why do we like it here? Let's just say the reasons are diverse. Kane University.